now. Uh, so we are happy to have Sasha Braverman from many places, two of them in Canada, and he will speak about universal colon branch and fit series. Sasha, please. Okay, thank you for the invitation. So let me say that from the very beginning that you know, uh, the goal is to report on some work in progress actually with joint with uh, Finkelberg and Trafkin. And uh, uh, so kind of the plan will be the following. First of all, there will be some very brief physics related you put it in quotation marks motivation second uh, and that will be probably a, a very big chunk chunk of uh, what i'm going to talk about is uh we review of geometric satake equivalence and the main emphasis here where that it will be actually derived geometric satake then three will be some discussion of a twisted version of of number two and i'll explain what it means and then four uh, will be sort of a uh, relation to one uh, so as i said in the abstract following certain suggestions by Greenfield and Raskin. Okay, that's kind of the plan. Mm. So uh, let me, mm, well, let me try to implement this plan. Um, so let's, uh, well, okay, so we begin number one, which I said that will be kind of physics related motivation by the fact well, there will be only very few words mentioned from physics. And let us actually start with some very elementary uh, algebraic data. So start with the following data. So I'm going to fix G, which is going to be a reductive, let's say connected. Algebraic group and everything today will be over C. So uh, let me say now over C, but in principle, everything will be over C. And then um, uh, let's uh, fix uh, W, which is a, well, the way I want to set it right now, it's going to be symplectic representation of G, fine dimensional algebraic representation of uh, G. So that means that W is a vector space, it's a finite dimensional vector space with a symplectic form, and we have a homomorphism homomorphism from G to the uh, symplectic group of W. Okay, now to this thing, physicists associate several, uh, uh, well, well, several types of physical data and that type of physical data, they eventually associate some types of mathematical data. But actually before I uh, 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 talk about this, let me say that in order for physicists to do this, there's some condition which uh, has to be satisfied by this. Uh, and this, is, this condition uh, has to do with certain, uh, it, it's, uh, 
it's kind of Z2 condition. So it, uh, the condition will be something will be even. So in fact, our formula for the condition is in a second. Uh, and thesis would call this <coughs> absence of anomaly or anomaly cancellation. So condition. And actually one of the goals of the talk will be to kind of get rid of this condition mathematically, or at least do something interesting when this condition is, uh, uh, is not satisfied. Oh, well, the condition of thesis one to put is the following. So there are several ways to formulate it. So the most algebraic way is the following. So any representation, if you have, well, let's take the Lie algebra. Oh, gee. And then any uh, uh, representation, doesn't matter symplectic or not, of, uh, of an algebraic group, in particular of its Lie algebra, defines an invariant by linear form. Uh, 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 Let's call this homomorphism somehow eta. Then eta defines an invariant by linear form on G. And this is just kind of pullback of a standard by linear form from the group GLN. So this is the form is sort of uh, this form. Uh, if you want to pair X and Y, X and Y nouns in the Lie algebra, well, I'll denote also by eta the same, uh, the differential of eta I'll also denote by eta. So this is just trace of eta uh, of X times eta of Y. So this is, again, here, the fact that W symplectic plays no role. Now, this symplectic form, uh, sorry, this bilinear form is uh, 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 in a certain uh, sense, it is integral. So this I can uh, say in the following way that if you, if you for instance, if you say choose uh, T in G, this is a maximal torus. And uh, let's take a Lie algebra. Then if you have, uh, lambda and mu are two coways, so two homomorphisms from C star to T. You can take the differentials, which I'll also denote by lambda and mu. This is going to be integral elements in the Lie algebra. And then the condition is that uh, this uh, pairing is, uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, well, it follows that this, this thing is an integer. Second. Yeah, uh, the condition is that, sorry, I have some technical issue here. This is an integer. And uh, uh, so, you know, condition on eta, which is some, for some reason uh, needed, uh, and well, we'll see some mathematical condition of this, is that uh, we need eta to be even. Which means that, uh, sorry, not e, not eta, but uh, this form. It means that one half of the form is still integral. You can show that this condition is actually equivalent to the following. Uh, equivalent sort of topological formulation. This is how thesis. Uh, it arises sort of, you know, say, this is how Witten would explain it, topological formulation. You can show that pi four of the symplectic group is actually z z mod two z, and then uh, the only condition is that eta must induce trivial map on pi four. But this is just a side remark. So for, for me, I'll be more important is this algebraic formulation, but, but this is actually equivalent. Um, so, right. So, so, so you see that this is kind of Z2 condition that something has to be, something has to be even. Uh, and uh, um, well, Let's assume that this condition is satisfied. Maybe before I proceed, let me give an example of a very wide class of situations uh, when this condition is, uh, is satisfied. So let V 
be any representation of G, not the sense symplectic, then take W to be V plus V star, which you can think of as the cotangent bundle to V. Then, uh, you know, when you think about it as a cotangent bundle, it endows it with a natural symplectic form. And this becomes a symplectic representation. And in this condition, this even this uh, uh, yeah, this evenness requirement is dramatically satisfied. So no anomaly in this case. This is an easy exercise. Um, in this case, so this is going to be a nice story. But somehow, I want to stress that even if representation is, for instance, isomorphic to something like this, then we can choose the splitting V plus V star in many different ways. And somehow, uh, we don't want to use it for constructions that are going to come. And uh, that's, that can, will be kind of one of the goals of the talk. OK, so now we, from now on, we assume that this condition is satisfied. Well, actually, from now on, until for some time, we're going to assume that the condition is satisfied. And then we're going to do something with it. Uh, so, okay, thesis would say that uh, uh, given this eta from g to symplectomorphism, so w, uh, thesis. Sasha, the evenness is coming from the symplectic structure on w or. No, no, even this has nothing to do with symplectic structure on W. Even as a condition, just on representation. But I mean, the representation should, should be should be symplectic, and and uh, and there should be some evenness condition that um, that I just for that I just formulated. But uh, uh, I'll you you'll hopefully towards the end you will see somehow some other meaning of this condition. But but in principle, condition is just it's just that. You know, any representation of any group defines a by the invariant form of Lie algebra, and uh, this and this bilinear form is always uh, integral in a certain sense, and you want to you want one half of it also to be integral. That's just just a conditional representation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fisa associate uh, the following things. First of all, they can associate sort of three dimensional, well, n equal to four. This this is a mount supersymmetry, but this is something that you shouldn't really pay attention, attention to these uh, symbols uh, for the purpose of this talk, but it's important three-dimensional quantum field theory. And also a boundary condition in uh, uh, certain also in equal to four. Uh, 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 four-dimensional gauge theory. And again, these are some kind of complicated physical notions, but uh, to these notions, one, uh, so physics also associates certain mathematical data to, to A, uh, 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 to A, uh, one can associate Certain varieties, and this is some. These varieties are, well, they're parts of modular spaces of vacuum for this theory. Uh, uh, certain spaces, and so one space that pieces with associated, which 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 is important for the purposes of this talk, is what's the called Coulomb branch of the modular space of vacuum, and. The way uh, I'm going to think about it for today's purposes, uh, uh, this is going to be some, uh, what's called MC. So this is uh, mm, going to be a Poisson generically symplectic affine variety. Its dimension is always going to be equal to twice the rank of G. And, uh, uh, um, and it will bring down the several structures. So one, one important structure is that- oh, Sorry, stupid question. 
Poisson would mean generically symplectic if you throw well, it means that, zero, uh, no, anything I mean, it's, it's, it's right. It means that, uh, well, it has uh, an open part which is uh, on which the Poisson structure comes from the symplectic. But if you throw away zeros of the Poisson structure, which is at least could I mention one sub variety, it will be symplectic. It will be what? I'm sorry. It will be symplectic if you throw away uh, the. Yes, if you throw block. away something. So essentially, it will it will typically be. I mean, the problem is that it will typically be singular, and so so usually just non singular part of it will be will be symplectic. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not sure that that's literally always true, but 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 typically that's true. But in any case, uh, I mean, it has. So so in other words, it's a fine variety, a fine, if like normal, and so so it's algebra, so it's given by an algebra function. So this algebra function just should be Poisson algebra, but generically should come from a symplectic structure. In fact, Fisius would actually not formulate it this way. Fisius would say that it's uh, it's a hyperkeller uh, space. But I'm not even sure. well. First of all, you know, it's kind of analytic notion which I don't want to. Discuss there, but also I'm not sure that uh, even uh, the notion of singular hyperkeral manifold is well defined. Maybe it is, but you know that's not a question for me. So um, um, let me also uh, produce another piece of structure here, and uh, another piece of structure is that there should be some kind of integrable. It comes with a canonical map like this, where W is the wall group. Uh, and uh, so it's uh, different from W, which before was. Oh, a oh, <laughs> this is a very bad. Uh, Not this one, but the previous one. Yeah, it's a yeah. Okay, I didn't think about this. Uh, uh, so, you know what? I think the wild. Group, fine, that's fine. Uh, okay, let's uh, let me maybe denote the wild group like this, uh, but it will very rarely appear. So somehow. This, this thing is so, uh, uh, and this thing is in fact, in fact, it will not be very important for again for today's purposes, but this pi is an integral system. So it means that uh, fibers are Lagrangian. Uh, uh, and so this is one thing, and again, so this should depend on this representation. Uh, and this, in fact, uh, was constructed. So for some time there was actually a question how to construct it. I mean, there's like a longer list of properties that uh, one which that's why it was constructed uh, in a series of papers by uh, myself, Finkelberg and Nakajima. Uh, and I'm kind of going to recall this uh, construction later, but uh, from a maybe slightly different point of view. Um, so, Mm. So this is already kind of an interesting space, even uh, somewhat interesting space, even in the case when uh, the representation is zero. And in fact, I'll, I'll say later what the space is, but let me, before I do this, and this is actually related, let me also talk about B. So to B, one can associate, well, first of all, in physics language, it will be the S dual, Boundary condition. Uh, let me maybe call this just to simple, to uh, to stress that it depends on W. We call it MCW, and as though by and and to that uh, one should be able to associate certain space. Let me call it XW. Uh, which is also sort of uh, Poisson variety, uh, but this time with Hamiltonian action of G chat. And in fact, one can restore A from B. So, uh, okay, you can ask what is the connection 
between XW and MCW. And in fact, if uh, you can actually construct MCW from SW, uh, Uh, let's construct MCW from XW. And uh, uh, for this, I need to recall certain construction. So let me see how I'm doing in terms of time. Okay, so I need to try to do this in the next five minutes or so, because then I want to pass to uh, some geometry. Uh, so how to construct? Well, the notion of... Uh, um, uh, 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 just in order to do this one, I need to recall the notion of Whitaker reduction. So, uh, uh, so okay, I'll be doing this for G check. So somehow let U check in G check be a maximal unipotent subgroup. So unipotent radical over L. Uh, uh, or what we call it, maybe N check. Uh, maximal unipotent. And so N check is it's Lie algebra. Uh, then we choose a generic character, a generic homomorphism, what we call chi from N check to the additive group. So typically, uh, like if, for instance, G, which is the same as G check, is G O N, then typically what this thing is, is uh, so it's just upper triangle unipotent matrices. And so sort of standard choice for chi would be summation of matrix elements EI, EI plus one, I like goes from one to minus one. And uh, there's something like something similar for any group. Uh, and then, uh, so assume that you have a, let X be uh, a variety, a Poisson, Variety with Hamiltonian action of uh, uh, G check. Then we have a moment map, moment map which goes from X to the dual space of the Lie algebra. And then we can take the Hamiltonian reduction of this by n. Uh, 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 so we can take the so what width of x. This is the Hamiltonian. One way to define it is the Hamiltonian reduction uh, of x by n comma chi. And what this means uh, by definition, it means that what you do is you take the pre-image of, so you take the moment map. So, okay, so this is the moment map for G, but uh, then you can, you can see the corresponding map for uh, moment map for N, and that will go from X to, uh, to N check style. And kind of, it's clear that, uh, you know, this moment map for N is just the composition of the original moment map and just projection from G check style to N check style. So you take, uh, Pre-image of this and the chi, uh, pre-image of chi under this moment map, and then quotient by and check. And of course, when you take quotient, somehow sometimes you might have problems, but actually in all the nice cases, somehow here the action is free. And so this is the Whitaker reduction. And moreover, there's a different way to formulate it. Uh, so, um, so, uh, 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 so this way is nice because it shows that uh, you get you get you get get some Poisson. But another way to do this is the following. So inside, so let's consider this G check star and inside one has certain thing, which I don't want to actually recall the definition, but it's something which is called cost and section. So this is a section. So this is some uh, uh, subset here, which has the following properties that first of all, it, uh, it goes inside the regular elements, but also if you look at the adjoint quotient, uh, and the adjoint quotient goes into uh, T check star uh, mod W, which is the same as just T mod W because uh, somehow T and T check are 
let me uh, team to check uh, naturally do with each other. Um, sorry. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, and uh, so this map, uh, this composed map is an isomorphism. So it's a section of this adjoint quotient map, which goes into regular elements. And then the claim is that this Whitaker reduction is also, this is essentially theorem of constant. Well, uh, this Whitaker reduction is the same as just pre-image under the moment map, under the original moment map of the constant section. So in particular, mm -hmm. I mean- Hush, X is generically symplectic similarly to- No, this is actually not, not important. So X, I mean, even you don't need anything about this. I mean, it doesn't even have to be Poisson. You only need this. You only need this map to. I mean, formally speaking, the only thing you need is that the map from X to to the those places of Lie algebra, which is equivalent of the actual. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, so example is uh, the following. Uh, so. Uh, Let's consider consider the cotangent bundle to the group, first of all. Now, this is, uh, well, this is definitely symplectic variety. Yeah? And this symplectic variety has an action of G check times G check. Ah, okay, so, sorry, before before an example, sorry, I forgot some, to say something. So, uh, so then uh, uh, before I do an example, so the claim is that this, Column branch, whatever it is of uh, associated. Sasha, the, the next line is that the mu inverse of the uh, constant section is that mu n or mu g? No, no this, this is for g. No. So you're going to just restrict the constant section. So, uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, so the claim is that this is just the Whitaker reduction of this x. Uh, w, sorry. For some reason, my device doesn't behave well today. Uh, uh, so this is uh, uh, so. So remember that this guy had it, had an action of G check uh, of this X W had an action of G check, and this had a projection to. T mod W. And so uh, this is actually kind of compatible in the sense that somehow whenever they take the reduction, then the result maps to T mod W. And the result maps to that. I mean, this actually, whenever we take any kind of Hamiltonian reduction of anything by G-check, the result still maps to that. Equation. Now, I wanted to do an example. And the example was uh, uh, the following. Um, so this actually has to do with the case when w equal to zero. So consider, first of all, the, as I said, cotangent bundle to G and think about it as, uh, sorry, I have some, sorry, it has never happened to this before. But some, some, okay. Consider the cotangent bundle, so it has, well, it's obviously symplectic, it has an action of G check times G check. So now what we can do, the game we can play is that we can, uh, uh, we can do this Whitaker reduction on either side. So now let's do it just on one side. Say, so let, let's, let's do the Whitaker reduction with respect to right copy of G check. So consider this uh, Whitaker, let me call it right of T. G check. Uh, now it still has a has an action of G check on the left, and so the claim is this is equal to this x zero. Zero means w equal to zero. So this is also called uh, sometimes twisted cotangent bundle. Sorry, uh, so I don't know what's going on. Just uh, let's stop for a second because this 
something is wrong with this device and it's never behaved like this before. Um, okay. Twist cotangent bundle to G check mode and the check. The reason is that if you did the same reduction with not for the generic character of N check, but for trivial character, then you would, this is a kind of general statement. If you take attention bundle to the group and uh, reduce it by subgroup, you get uh, attention bundle to the quotient. And this is some twisted version of this. And it still has an action of G check. And, uh, 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 and if you further take its Whitaker reduction, uh, if you take its further Whitaker reduction, uh, uh, on the left, so that means that I can write it like this. It's, it's a Whittaker reduction respect to G check times G check of T star G check. Then this is going to be the Coulomb branch corresponding to zero. And this has a, actually, if you use this description with a personal slice, you can actually show that this thing is also what is called universal centralizer. So this thing is uh, also um, the space uh, of the following uh, bears just let me call it gx, where g is in g check and x uh, is uh, in the constant slice. And uh, they commute. So it's kind of modular space of pairs, commuting element of the group and commuting uh, element of the group and element of the Lie algebra which commute. Uh, and well, formally required, you also need to require that this element of the Lie algebra is regular. And uh, so that is uh, uh, that, that that is what this Coulomb branch is going to be in the case uh, in the case of zero representatives. All right, so it took actually much longer than I wanted, but uh, any question about it? Because now I'm going to switch gears and start talking about the fine grass model. I think you you have already started to talk about it because it's exactly- No, I mean, no, I think I was never mentioned here, so. Yeah, okay. Okay, so part two is uh, uh, the following. So, okay, let's, let's for maybe, for about 10 minutes, let's forget about all this. And, uh, or maybe, well, at least for some time, let's forget about this. So let's reduce the standard notation now. So this is about G check. Now we come back to the group G. And so let's introduce the fine Grassmannian. So let's, as usual, K be uh, the ring of Laran power series, and O is its is ring tail of series, it's kind of ring of integers. And then uh, you write the fine Grassmannian, uh, uh, the, the fine Grassmannian of G is the quotient of G of K mod G of O. And then for, for future purposes, let me say that uh, you can think about it in the following way. This is, uh, this, uh, uh, well, uh, a uh, fancy way of thinking about this, this is the modular space of the following data of G bundles on the formal disk, which is by definition spec of O endowed um, with a trivialization on the formal punctured disk, which is by definition spec of K. So that's, uh, uh, so this is a fine grass mine, so it's kind of uh, uh, in scheme. So this is a, uh, this is a, an, uh, a union of, well, it, it can be endowed with an in scheme structure. So it's a, a union of actually projective, fine dimensional projective algebraic varieties. Um, and uh, also the group G of O, well, the whole group G of K acts on the left and the particular G of O acts and G of O orbits are finite dimensional. Uh, 
uh, geo orbits are finite dimensional and actually their closures are those projective varieties. And so it makes sense to speak about, talk about sheaves, geo equivalent sheaves uh, on this, uh, on this uh, uh, space. And there are kind of several slightly different contexts about which you can do. So first of all, we can consider the uh, uh, abelian category, and then we'll need to consider the derived category. So abelian category is that we can see the peripheral sheaves geophoic variant on the fine grass mountain. And there's a well-known story here. So first of all, this has a natural structure of a tensor category, symmetric, it's a symmetric monoidal category. Well, it's a slightly not real fact because, I mean, if you didn't put pure rules, if we actually put some kind of derived category here, that would be sort of automatic because any kind of sheaves, well, whatever we mean by sheaves and geophoric variant on the fine Grassmannian, we can formally write it as sheaves on the stack equation G of K mod geofo mod geofo, and that's a, and then it has a kind of convolution and it has a monoidal structure which is given by convolution. Uh, and conversion has to do with the multiplication of G of K. So whenever you kind of mod out on both sides by the same group, you can end up with monoidal structure. The fact that the fact that it preserves perversity is a kind of uh, non-trivial fact, but it's well known. And moreover, it's well known what this category is, this kind of standard geometric Sataki equivalence, which is kind of the starting point for geometric landless correspondence and many other things. Uh, Says that this category of perverse sheaves geophoric covariant on the fine grass monion is uh, 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 naturally equivalent to the category of fine dimensional representations of the group GG. <clears throat> so that's, uh, uh, that's a well known fact, but I want to upgrade it. And uh, I want to upgrade it to, I want to discuss what happens if on the left we can see the equivariant derived cap. Now, before this, let me actually uh, uh, relate. Sasha, on the right hand side, the shifts that sh should be regarded as a stacks, right? Mm, well, in, in, in this last line, I mean. The, 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 on the shift, the shift. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the, this is the stack, but, but well, the same thing happens for fine dimensional groups. So mm -hmm. We have a just, just fine dimensional algebraic group and a subgroup. And you can see the sheaves on this kind of stack equation, but if you don't if you don't like stacks, that's the same as to consider sheaves on suppose you have a group G and subgroup H. You can see the sheaves on G, which are with respect to H times H acting on the left and on the right. Then if you can see derived category of such things, then this this always has a monoidal structure. So the fact that it's symmetric monoidal, for example, is also not trivial. Mm, but uh, this has this is kind of same type of phenomena as that the spherical cake algebra is coming. Uh, but the claim is that in this particular, so so the existence of monoidal structure is very general. The fact that it preserves the abelian category that the symmetric is, is not is not real. But it's okay. Now before I proceed to drive category, let me actually say uh, one other property of uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, so another incarnation of how a dual group appears is uh, uh, this: the following uh, statement, which I think due to. Bizrukovnikov, Fintel, Berk, and Mirkovich. Which says that let's consider this a fine grass money and let's consider it's, uh, uh, let's consider, sorry, I want, I want to consider, I want to consider the equivalent geophore equivalent homology. Again, so the way it's defined is that this is actually inductive limit of fine dimensional projective varieties, geophore invariant, and you just can see the inductive limit of those homologies. And then for the same reason as, so for the same reason why this category of sheaves have a monoidal structure, this actually, uh, you know, this is a priori, it's just a vector space, but this vector space has actually an algebra structure. This is an algebra. 
And in fact, you know, because everything is equivariant, it's an algebra over equivariant homology of a point of a, of a point with respect to this, and which is the same as uh, equivariant uh, homology of point with respect to just G, and which is the same, uh, and this is actually known, that this is the same as functions on precisely this adjoint quotient on T mod tau. I mean, polynomial functions. And so, uh, so it's algebra over this. And what this algebra is, so, well, in fact, it's, it's a, again, for the same reason why that category was symmetric, this is going to be commutative algebra. And so uh, the claim is that the spectrum of that algebra is precisely this universal centralized that I talk about or the column branch of the zero representation. Um, so uh, now the idea is that other Coulomb branches idea more general MCW will arise from some uh, from cohomology. Well. Will arise as uh, let me say it like this as spec of cohomology of some other object uh, on some other sheaves on the fine grass minor. So in, in the case uh, in the case of uh, zero representation, so for w equal to zero, uh, take we should take actually, if you are careful, we should take the dualizing shift, which is almost the same as a constant shift, but because of this infinite dimensionality, you should, you know, it's better to talk about dualizing shift than constant shift. Uh, but other than that, we're going to construct some kind of other object. And somehow it turns out that, uh, coming back to what I said in the very beginning, this other, this other object will actually make sense for all W, even for those for which the anomaly is still present. But you just won't be able to take come out. But before we do all this, let me. I want to take the, talk a bit about the derived Sataki. And uh, so, and the derived Sataki will also allow us to construct the thing which I called XW. This, in what sense you cannot take a homology of something? But it will be not a sheaf, but a twisted sheaf. I mean, for it. What homology? I, I am confused. Homology is an algebra. It's it, it if it's well, commutative. There will be notion. I mean, sometimes there's no. Let me not go into this now. So somehow, for when this Z two anomaly is uh, zero, then uh, you will be able to construct some certain particular sheaf, and then uh, on that finger smiling, and take its cohomology. If the anomaly is there, we'll be able to construct not a sheaf but a twisted sheaf, whatever this means. Hopefully, I'll be able to. I'll have at least several minutes to talk about it. And uh, and uh, uh, this uh, and because it will be not a non shift but a twisted shift, you will you will not be able to take its cohomology. But anyhow, let, let's, let's not, so okay. I once I only have like sixteen minutes, so uh, but let me. Try oh, you can, you can go over the time. It's not. So, okay, now let me. Sasha, Sasha, sorry to interrupt you again. So, here uh, for this homology or cohomology, the algebra is the commutativity in that category. Um, is that the. No, it's not, it's not formally the commutativity of the category, it's just proven in the same, in the same way. Okay. So, it, it's not, for example, I mean, like dualizing, this dualizing shift, it's not an object of my category. So, my category of perverse shifts, first of all, they all have only fine dimensional support, and this doesn't have fine dimensional support. And also, it's not perverse in the sense. So, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's an actually, it's really an object of the derived category. I'm just saying, so now I'm going to kind of, okay, maybe let me say what I'm going to say. Maybe, maybe this will resolve the question. So, the rest attack is that now I want to consider the derived category. Well, let's say, uh, Simplicity kind of bounded derived category of well, uh, 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 geophoric shifts and I find grass minion. Now, in general, let me say that in general, somehow, whenever we talk with, about equivariant shifts, 
the derived category is very often much more complicated than the abelian category. So the derived category is by no, it has a T structure, which is the, which is the category of perverse sheaves, but in the, in the equivariant world, it's very rarely, uh, it's very, it's very it's, sometimes it happens, but it rarely happens that the derived category will be uh, the derived category of the abelian category. So, uh, so we want to describe that on the sort of Langlands dual side in terms of the group chit chat. Uh, well, this is still symmetric monoid. Uh, now, mm, well, and there's an answer. This is uh, uh, an old theorem by, again, this Rukownikov and Finkelberg, uh, but that's actually a reformulation of some conjecture of uh, Dreenfeld, which says the following thing, that this uh, category, well, let me, uh, yeah. Uh, this is equivalent to, well, okay, let me write it. Uh, 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 mm, let me write it and then I'll explain the notation. Mm. Okay, so what is written here? So first of all, we can see the, this Lie algebra G check. You can see that there's a vector space put at the homological degree two. Then we can see that's uh, Maybe I should also put finally generate because you can see the bottom right category. Uh, we can see that this thing we think about as a DG algebra with zero differential. Uh, then we can consider DG modules of it, or we can consider the derived category of G modules. And also we want them to be G check equivariant. So we can see the uh, DG modules finally generated with endowed with compatible G check action. Um, and uh, uh, That's okay. So the, so the claims that this category is really is, uh, so that this uh, derived Sataki derived, um, category is equivalent to this thing. And so the monoidal structure on the left, which have from convolution on the right hand side, which just correspond to tensor product over this uh, algebra. So somehow if you ignore the DG part, if you ignore the homological grading, then you can, you can think about it as some kind of coherent sheaves on the actually dual space to the Lie algebra J check. Which I could vary in respect to the group check. Um, so, uh, so here there are some funny uh, things here. So, for instance, uh, uh, so for instance, under this equivalence, uh, you can uh, you can ask what under this equivalence corresponds to. So, uh, yeah. So uh, 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 you can actually uh, you can see that perverse sheaves. Which are which corresponds to which you know by no dress attack your objects of rapture check correspond to free modules. Namely, if you have any representation V, let's say of G check, you can consider just V tens of this. Symmetric algebra, and uh, endow it with diagonal, you know, it's a, as a module over the symmetric algebra, and endow with diagonal action, with tensor product action, or just natural action. So these are free models. On, on the other hand, if you take the dualizing sheaf of the fine plus moment, then this thing, will, will, what, what will this thing correspond to? This thing, the claim is that this thing will correspond to uh, nothing else uh, but the uh, 
uh, functions on this Whittaker reduction on what just on one side of T star G check. This twisted cotangent bottle to G mod M. And uh, another fact is that if you look here, then here, I mean, you have any equivalent shift, you can take its equivalent cohomology. So the functor. On the left hand, this cohomology on the left hand side corresponds. Note that the com uh, that this is again uh, supposed to be a, uh, a modular equivalent cohomology of a point. So it's not cohomology is not just a vector space, but it's a it's a module of a equivalent cohomology of a point. And this thing corresponds to uh, just restriction to constant section on the right hand side. Maybe there's a three properties of this equivalence. So the idea is that uh, now, okay. So 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 this is the derived Sataki equivalence. Now uh, coming back to this uh, story coming from gauge theorists. Now uh, idea is that. Uh, Given G and uh, symplectic representation, what you want is uh, uh, define some ring, actually commutative ring object, we call it AW in this derived category. And then uh, apply Sataki equivalence to it. And let's see what the apply. So let's call this the equivalence. Let me, I actually want to note it, but if forgot, let me, let me call it maybe phi. So uh, then I want to com compute what phi of that, what kind of properties will it have? Well, first of all, uh, I said that uh, the, this kind of convolution monodal structure on this constructible side corresponds to just uh, corresponds to just uh, 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 tensor product on the uh, 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 on the uh, coherent side on the right hand side. So this thing is going to be an algebra over. Well, okay, let me ignore sort of uh, DG details. So in particular, I mean, in principle, this thing, it's an object of some derived category. So it's a kind of derived category of DG models. I'm passing, uh, when I write five of this, I'm actually secret passing to cohomology. So it means that I'm ignoring, I'm, I'm just, uh, instead of considering, I mean, if I have an object of derived category of DG modules, then it has a well-defined cohomology. So um, I'm just considering that, so let me. Let me not write it. So, uh, so then it will be an algebra over the CMG check negative two with action of the group. So, if you take, I mean, everything, if we assume that everything's commutative, then if we take its spectrum uh, uh, of this thing. Then this is going, it's going to be some affine variety because it's an algebra over this. Well, first of all, it's going to be conical because, uh, well, I mean, it has, it will have some C star action uh, because, because of the grading, but let me actually ignore this. What more important is that it's endowed with connection of G check and it has something like the moment map. So we call it mu, I mean, it has a map into here. So, so we already get a variety, which sort of maybe from here, it's not, it's not, Necessarily Poisson because uh, well Poisson structure hasn't appeared yet, but but we get some writing down with a, with a dual group and uh, and and with the map of the Lie algebra, which should be thought of as a moment. And in fact, let me not go into this. If you require a little bit more, it will automatically be Poisson. So if uh, in addition 
uh, you require that uh, this AW is uh, C star equivariant, uh, where C star acts by what's called loop rotation. So that means that it rescales the variable T. Then uh, this guy, then the spec five A double will automatically be Poisson. In fact, it will come with the canonical quantization. But I don't have, unfortunately, don't have time to talk about this. So that's kind of uh, now. Uh, the idea is that uh, well, how do, uh, where can we produce ring objects from? So uh, it's uh, easy to uh, see the following thing. So somehow, if suppose we have a homomorphism between two reductive algebraic groups, then it's easy to see that uh, we get a map. Uh, call it I from the affine between the affine grass minus. Now assume that uh, so let some A be in the uh, derived category G of all, well, sorry, G1, G2 of all, current derived category of fine grass minus G2 be a ring object. Then we claim that if you take its pullback here, and well, formally have to take the shriek pullback, but we're not going into this, then the shriek pullback is a ring object of D G1 for thank you, one of G1. Now uh so what one could be tempted to do is to do the following thing that suppose that we didn't have this anomaly problem. Uh, so uh, 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 so if anomaly problem, we would just say that uh, we say that we we have this G mapping to the symplectic group, and then we would just need one ring object just on the affine uh, on the affine Grassmannian of this symplectic group. So just for every symplectic group, we'll need to construct one object and then we'll, we could pull it back and then, uh, and that would give us a construction. Now, unfortunately, the only problem is there. Now, let me say somehow what was known before and what one can do now and very briefly. As, uh, so, so, so in fact, th this was the idea of Dreamfield that this is how you should, should be able to, uh, should construct it. But in principle, we have this anomaly problem. Now, in our works with Finkelberg and Nakajima, We did. Uh, we didn't do this because somehow we didn't have sort of the correct language to do this. But we we kind of did all of this in this cotangent case. So in the case when we constructed this A W when W was of this form. And what's kind of unpleasant there is not just, it's not only the assumption that W is isomorphic to something like this, but, but the fact that the construction actually used the splitting. So in particular, it was kind of not canonically attached to, uh, uh, to, uh, 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 to W, it was kind of attached to V. But, uh, but the, I mean, I don't have time to recall what the construction was, but the point is that this construction actually satisfied uh, this, uh, 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 it, it was kind of compatible with this idea, namely, it was kind of manifest from the construction that uh, uh, if you had, uh, so if you have like 
homomorphisms from G1 to G2, and then uh, G2 would map to GL to the general linear group of some V, uh, then uh, our construction was such that this AW for the group G1 was exactly the pullback of AW for the group G2. So somehow it didn't contradict this idea. So in fact, if you only restrict yourself to this guise of contingent type, then it's enough to construct this thing just for, uh, just for, for the standard representation of GOM. But somehow you want to do it in this uh, symplectic case. And uh, now uh, let me maybe spend five minutes saying, I mean, I won't explain the construction, I'm just saying, I, I will just say what can be constructed. So, uh, so what to do when you have a normally, when you have a normally. The answer is this, that you should consider not sheaves in their fine Grassmannian, but you should consider twisted sheaves. And twisted sheaves means they fall. The fine Grassmannian is endowed uh, with the determinant bundle. Let me call it L. In fact, this, thing, this uh, bundle can be constructed. Well, it's not, uh, can, it, it is canonically attached to precisely uh, invariant integral by linear form forms on the Lie algebra. Um, uh, in fact, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, and, uh, but if, if G is simple, for example, then this unique minimal one and so on. So, let me think. Uh, but this way, and then what I can do, I mean, whenever I have this line bundle on the space, you can sit and if you fix some complex number, uh, then uh, you can uh, consider uh, the following thing. You can uh, consider, um, uh, uh, you can consider, you can, can, can see the sheaves. on the total space of this line bundle minus the zero section with monodromy, uh, well, I mean, let's say C is in C star, uh, monodromy, uh, or oh, maybe let me say C is in C, but let me, monodromy uh, uh, exponential of two pi i C, on the over the fibers. So if you have a line bundle, then if you throw away the zero section, it becomes a C star bundle. Each of the C star has fundamental group, which is Z, and you can you want to consider the sheaves on the total space of the C star bundle, such that the monodromy around uh, uh, this uh, C star uh, is given by some number. And uh, so if this monodromy is trivial, then it's the same as sheaves downstairs. So if C is an integer, uh, then this is the same as sheaves downstairs. But if C is not in the interest, that, that's, uh, that, that's some kind of notion of twisted sheaves. Now, the claim is that, uh, 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 and, but you can still consider this. So you can study. Uh, Sash, sorry, I have a question. Uh, is, it, uh, is it essential in this definition that it's the determinant line bundle? Or can no, no, absolutely not. It's just you can you can, you can, you can, you can, you can talk about this. Uh, I mean, it's closely related also to the uh, uh, notion of twisted differential operators and so on. But in principle, if you if you want to consider sheaves in a topological sense, then whenever I have a space and a line bundle of it over it, uh, you can consider uh, you can trace the notion of twisted uh, sheaves. So it's, it's, it's some kind of juror because you know it's it's actually. It's kind of a sheaf of categories because you can do it on every open subspace of your of your space, and uh, if it's open subspace is sufficiently small, then we get the same definition because because net. I mean, if this line bundle is trivial, then uh, yeah, maybe it's important. Mark, if it's line, line, line bundle happens to be trivial, that's the same notion as before, independently of what C is, because uh, you can just uh, uh, because you can tensor with like you can take constant shift on x times. I mean, if your if your line total space of your C star bundle is just x times C star, 
then uh, you can take constant shift from x multiply times the corresponding uh, local uh, 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 system with this monogram uh, over the fibers, and then you can start uh, uh, you, can, you start tensoring with this. I mean, if you start with the usual shift, untwisted shift, and just multiply by this thing. Well, anyhow, I mean, it claims that it's easy to see that if the line bundle is trivial, then uh, uh, then twisted shifts are the same as shifts, and uh, so. So therefore, uh, this notion of twisted shifts, it's kind of shift theoretic because you can do it on any, on any open subset of your X. But uh, if open subsets is small where L can be trivialized, that's the same notion as before. But so, so you get some kind of shift of categories, which is sort of locally look, look the same uh, as before, but they can glued differently. Thank you. So, uh, uh, so you can study this derived category of geophoric variant shifts, which is, with C twisted on the fine grass mining. And so, uh, and they claim it, well, and as I said that actually C canonically will be not a number, but uh, C canonically is an invariant form of the Lie algebra. That, that, that's what you associate, that's what you can associate, that's what you associate determined bundles to. So, uh, uh, but let me just say that, uh, uh, one, what one can do is, uh, uh, but let me say that if C is not uh, an integer, uh, then there's no way uh, to take homology of this. But these objects still are still well defined. And so now what happens is that um, uh, for G being the symplectic group of uh, some symplectic vector space, you can take, well, this is a kind of canonical determinant choice of determinant bundle there. And if you take C to be equal to one half, then there's a, there's a uh, one can construct, and I don't have time uh, to explain how to do it, one can construct certain kind of universal in some sense, ring object in G. Uh, G of O one half over G. Again, G is the symplectic group. And then whenever uh, you, uh, whenever you uh, uh, have morphism G to SPW, you can use the same thing as before. So you get, so you get uh, some I from GER G to GER SPW. And then uh, this universal thing, let me call it A universal W. And then we can take uh, I upper shriek of A W universal. And a priori, you get a, again a twisted sheaf, and uh, and this twisted sheaf is, uh, you know, uh, mm, uh, it's uh, it corresponds to twisting. So here you have some kind of line bundle, uh, and the twisting was one half. So this is twisted. It, it was in twisting is twisting corresponds to pullback of L and C equal to one half. But I say that if C happens to be integral then uh, the twisting is actually trivial. So if it happens that if you take this kind of standard determinant bundle uh, and pull, uh, on the for the symplectic group and pull it back to G, if uh, in the Picard group of the Grassmannian this becomes divisible by two, then this twisting is actually integral, which is the same as trivial. So if uh, there exists a square root of I star L in the Picard of G. Then twisting by C equal to one half is trivial. And now there's a very easy lemma that this happens if and only if you have this anomaly cancellation from the, from the very beginning. So claim this happens if and only if 
there's no anomaly in the sense we discussed in the beginning. So somehow this is just one universal twisted object from the affine Grassmannian with simplexity group, which you can then pull back to the affine Grassmannian family group and potentially get still a twisted object. But if you have this Z2 anomaly conciliation, then it's actually untwisted object and then everything works. But, but, uh, but somehow this twisted object is well defined always. And I think I have to stop now. Let me just say that what I didn't have time to talk about is that, I mean, I don't, obviously didn't, didn't explain how to construct this universal guy. And this universal guy is very closely related to uh, certain th theta sheaves in the context of uh, geometric language corresponding started by uh, Laforgue and Lysenko, who kind of, what they did, they kind of categorified uh, the automorphic value representation of the symplectic sim group. <coughs> and so this um, universal guy turns out to be very closely related to that. So it can be sort of, <coughs> sorry, it can be very explicitly described, but I don't have time to, to do this. Okay, let me stop here. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, questions, please. Uh, so I, I have a question about the status shifting and uh, um, are you talking about the global like one on one G or the local? Sorry, can, can I, I, I couldn't hear. Can, 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 can I repeat the question? Uh, I said when you when you say this related theta shifts, are you talking about um, kind of a local version or, or global? No, version? it's actually global. So uh, so the claim is okay. The, the formal statement is that they should take, take this theta shift for uh, for the curve being P one. And then, uh, which can be thought of uh, as shifts actually on what's called the thick affine Grassmannian rather than thin affine Grassmannian. And then we have certain Radon transform uh, 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 going from the, so in fact, for P1, you have sort of certain functor going sort of from global station to local. In other words, some Radon transform which goes from shifts on uh, the thick affine Grassmannian to shifts on the thin affine Grassmannian. And so we should take this, this theta sheaf and uh, apply this radon transform. Uh, and uh, and th th that, is, that turns out to be the answer. I mean, th this is an a priori construction. This isn't a kind of, I mean, I mentioned this suggestion by Raskin and so Raskin is a priori local construction, but it's not, it's not explicit. So it's, it's, it goes also, well, it uses some kind of demodal construction, but, uh, but it, it, it a priori, Construct some twisted D module, then it's it's kind of not very difficult to phrase, but it gives something uh, which is a priori difficult to compute. And uh, it turns out that it's the same as to take this Lafour Glissant to sheaf, which for P1 is, 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 is a very explicit thing, and then apply some explicit integral uh, transform to it, which is some kind of some kind of affine version of Radon transform. And this is what thing what this thing is. Great, thanks. And, and I was wondering, so that your algebra, if I apply like function chief dictionary, is it something recognizable? Uh, uh, well, you apply well, what? well for, for this, you have to form out the question. So when you function chief, you mean al what kind of? Al ah, spectrum. It's al algebra. What, 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 what do you mean by algebra? So, or what do you mean by function chief correspondence? Uh, I mean, you're constructing some sheaf on the affine Grassmannian. I could ask, like, uh, the corresponding function on the. Uh, well, first, first of all, it's not a sheaf; it's, it's a twisted sheaf. Yeah. Uh, and uh, where? Okay, it's a good question. What is this function? Well, like I said, so one thing, one way to think about it is that if you take this corresponding, uh, well function which corresponds to uh, the theta sheaf on P one, and then apply some. Um, uh, some, uh, well, some kind of random transform to it. So whether there's a better way to describe it, uh, this is actually a good question. Yeah, this I don't know because see the point is that in order to describe the sheaf, uh, uh, it, it's easy to describe which function corresponds to the dual of this sheaf if you want, because see the point is the way it's constructed, it's 
it's easy to describe with shriek stocks, but it's difficult to describe with star stocks. So, and in order to describe the function, you actually need the star stocks. And if you know the shriek stocks, that, that actually tells you that uh, you can describe the function corresponding to its first year dual. Mm, okay, thanks. And so, uh, well, I mean, and the function will be, it will be something very, uh, very fun. See, it's geo4, uh, see if it's geo4 equivariant. So the, four, the function is anyhow constant in any geo4 orbit. And geo4 orbits, they correspond to dominant co weight. So for every, you just need a number for, the, for every dominant co weight. And you, if you replace it with a dual, then somehow this number will be just q to some power. And the, the power is determined by the co weight. And I wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to write the explicit formula for you right now. But, uh, but, but it's some, some q to some explicit power depending on co weight. So something like this. Okay, thank you. Uh, more questions? Yes, uh, Sasha. Yes. I have a few questions. First one is still uh, we defining the corner branch as a spec of algebra objects uh, through the. As what? Geometric Sorry, I can't hear. Can, can, the, can. The ge through the derived geometric Sataki, right? The phi. Yes, I mean, again, so uh, you don't even have to say it this way. So, again, in this cotangent case, when W is V plus V star, so our okay, original definition didn't use Sataki, but then it's just convenient to use it. Uh, uh, I mean, it's convenient to use Sataki, but you can you can actually phrase this definition uh, without it because somehow this ring object in that case can direct image of the dualizing sheep from some explicit larger space. And so therefore, mm -hmm. this algebra in this case is just is just Borel Moore homology of some explicit space, which is uh, map, which maps to the fine Grassmannian and which is attached to G and W. And in this case, this algebra is, uh, let's say, in the derived sense that's commutative. So we have well, I mean, to... again, I'm, I'm ignoring derived structures. I'm just considering the spec. So the, 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 the in, in the commutative sense or in, in the not commutative sense. I'm sorry? When, when you're taking the spec, um, no, no, it is commutative. It is commutative, but it's it, is actually, okay. it is actually dealt with Poisson structure. And moreover, it's endowed with canonical quantization. So okay. the spec is thinking in the sense of commutative algebra, but this commutative algebra is endowed with canonical non commutative, uh, 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 non commutative deformation, which has to do with the C star, with this loop rotation equivariance. So, so okay. spec is thinking in the sense of. Uh, commutative algebras, but because the algebra is endowed with canonical non-commutative deformation, that that uh, says that this variety is actually canonically Poisson, and then you can actually also prove that generically it's Poisson's ratio is simple act. Okay, I see. The second is the Whitaker uh, reduction construction. Yes. So you are taking the maximal uh, unipotent subgroup. Yes. Which somehow I was thinking in terms of a regular unipotent. Um, well, it has a lot to do with that, yes. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, and then the uh, another direction would be uh, take other important elements through uh, SR2 and uh, still can take a represent representation. Okay. Well, I mean, through the W algebra construction. What? I mean, uh, so here, here it sort of arises uh, independently of our will in the sense that, so the statement is that, the statement is that this Whitaker reduction is essentially. Um, well, in the proper sense, it is uh, the same. Uh, I mean, when you can see this derived geometric Sataki, then uh, with the reduction, which is actually the same as reduction to this uh, cost and slice, mm -hmm. that's the same as uh, uh, as equivalent cohomology. I mean, it's it's the fun uh, uh, with the reductions. What corresponds to just uh, taking cohomology on the constructible side? Now, I. Agree that in principle we can do this reduction for other new potents, but uh, what this corresponds to on this constructible side, I don't know. I see. Okay, so I, I was curious whether the construction. No, I, 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 I mean, yeah, you, you, you can do this, but somehow I don't know what you'll. So probably if new potent is something like regular and Levy, maybe you can say something. If it's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but in principle, this this algebra, you I mean, this this. And look at this reduction due to Premet, which is uh, which has to do with this fine W algebras and so on. Actually, for any important, and uh, 
what it will do on the constructible side of arbitrary neural port, and I have absolutely no idea. Mm -hmm. So the, I was curious whether the W algebra can also coming out from this quantum branch construction. It's not at the moment. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, more questions? Uh, so I have kind of a, a little bit perpendicular to what's been asked. Uh, so your your W uh, uh, is fixed forever, and uh, mm, does it make sense uh, to consider uh, all W simultaneously, like to categorify with respect to the representations of the group? Mm. So, well, I don't know. Uh, maybe it does. I, I, I just don't, don't know. No, how no, no. To... I mean that uh, since you mentioned uh, at the very beginning that physicists think of it as boundary conditions for certain uh, gauge theories, so they like to um, consider categories of boundary conditions. Um, uh, Probably uh, they start with a particular uh, four dimensional gauge theory, so the group is fixed. But what about this W, for example, why it's symplectic? Well, again, maybe you can do something like this, but it's uh, on the spot, I'm not sure how to assign precise meaning to this question. Mm. Okay, if, if I knew, maybe I wouldn't ask it. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Uh, it's just... Um, uh, For example, if you take one W and take another W, take the direct sum, that also you know, gives... I mean, this is, I mean, on the level, on the, for the school and branch, there's actually kind of no known what happens, then somehow they build some maps in some particular direction, but... But how to organize this into... You see, this boundary conditions. Hmm. They probably will form. Well, okay. I probably shouldn't try to say anything because, uh, well, I mean, I, 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 I cannot say anything intelligent. Okay, and uh, the case of uh, this quiver gauge theories, it's automatically uh, split, yeah, and there are no anomalies. No, but somehow it's still kind of interesting. I mean, it, it, it can still be potentially important for something because, like I said, all our cons previous constructions with Hinkleberg and Nakajima, they were, I mean, uh, they, they had the, this feature that they, uh, they actually use the splitting. So for, for quivers, that means that somehow it's it's kind of choice of orientation. Uh, and uh, so in particular, I mean, if you have a, um, I mean, all, all the construction should be functorial with respect to, uh, 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 with respect to automorphisms of your W as a symplectic representation of G. Uh, but all our previous constructions, they were only functorial. I mean, you had to first of all decompose W as V plus V star, but everything was functorial only with respect to automorphisms of V rather than morphisms of uh, V plus V star. Mm -hmm. so, he, so from this point of view, in, in this language, you get kind of better construction because you're not, um, you're, you're not, you, I mean, even, even when the splitting exists, you may, you may have a lot of different splittings and, uh, and therefore somehow when you choose a splitting, you, you lose certain, certain functorialities and that potentially can be important for some. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking because, you know, for quivers, uh, uh, when you construct this cotangent bundle, you basically sort of double your quiver Right, but somehow you double your quiver if you originally chose an orientation, right? But I mean, uh, so what I'm trying of the quiver, but what I'm saying, what I'm, I mean, principle, you can, uh, but the actual space only depends on the unoriented graph. 
I mean, every, everything actually should canonically depend on the uh, on, on the graph without orientation. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, choosing the splitting in that case is, is precisely the choice of orientation. Yes, yes, yes. It, and, it, and, 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 and somehow the point is that you don't want to do that. Okay. I mean, it, it's even worse than that. I mean, any choice of orientation gives you splitting, but it's not even, it's not even clear. Well, maybe in that case it is true, but I mean, I have to check whether any any splitting when it, any splitting comes from orientation. This is actually I'm not even sure this is true. Any any orientation gives you splitting, but maybe maybe you can have some other things as well. Probably. Um, so yeah, it depends only on the linear symplectic manifold, but not. Yes, uh, and so yes, yeah, so and so so the point is that you want you kind of you're after some construction which will be kind of canonical attached to just the symplectic representation, nothing else, and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and also it's kind of funny that you can still construct something even when you have this anomaly, so you can see kind of uh, so you can construct this. So again, you always construct this ring object in the Fengers model. The point is that if this ring object uh, is uh, it's 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 potentially twisted, right? but this twisting can turn out to be trivial. If if, if it's trivial, then we can start uh, doing something to it. For example, you can take its cohomology, and uh, its spectrum will be the uh, uh, will be the Coulomb branch. You can apply this derived Sataki to it, and again, the spectrum with the get with derived Sataki will be this uh, what I call X W. Uh, I mean, actually, some version of derived Sataki exists in twisted case as well, but let's ignore it for now. But in principle, so so you, you can start playing some games with it. But uh, if uh, uh, if it's genuinely twisted, then uh, we cannot do at least some of these things. So, for instance, we cannot uh, take uh, uh, cohomology. But the string object is still perfectly well defined even when we have the anomaly, and and this universal guy is actually really twisted. It's just then we start pulling it back with respect to, to other groups. And then somehow, when you pull it back, so if you're lucky, the twisting is trivial. But, uh... mm -hmm. uh, uh, just another stupid question. Is there any relation to this murta uh, field theories? Well, there's some, but again, I mean, murta field can see the, if you can see literally what's, what has been discussed here, if you can see this more to Chicago story for type A, then it will be special key. I mean, it's actually a special case of or rather it's maybe mere dual to equivalent theory. So for some very particular equivalent. So, so. Uh, okay, uh, all right. Uh, uh, other, uh, any other questions? Well, if not, uh, Sash, thank you very much. Very inspiring uh, talk. So I ask you <laughs> to send me, to email me your notes. We will okay. post them. Not sure it's very readable, but okay. No, it's quite readable, yeah.